Hey, we're going to bring on a guest real quick, just to give his analysis, his expert analysis, who's been covering the buffs for uh, 20 plus years. Also does a podcast with myself. Uh, you can find him at buffstampede.com on 247 Network. And it's a guy you see all the time in the in the uh, media pressers. My main man, Adam Mustard Tiger. What's going on, Adam? Hey, guys. Not trying to uh, in- interject myself too much here, but I was watching the show, and uh, uh, it was quite the atmosphere out in Lubbock, and uh, just wanted to join you guys for a minute. Yes, hey, sir. man, you, said you you had quite the adventure getting there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I ended up timing it up. I, I was running a, a timer. I spent 28 hours and 33 minutes in the car round trip. So uh, not my favorite road trip covering the buffs, but uh, you're, you're memorable. It's memorable. It, I will never forget this trip. I will never forget it. Uh, and the, the hate wasn't on Texas because until we got down there and then the tortillas started flying and then that was a whole different uh, situation. Yeah. But uh, it was the weather getting out of Colorado. It just was shut down everywhere. And um, it's funny be- listening to everybody's story getting down there from all the media members. Everybody had different troubles they, they ran into, different routes they took. Uh, and uh, I think I got the worst of it, but uh, everybody had to go through that. So I, it's almost like we're trauma bonded now trying to get down to Lubbock. Uh, uh, uh. Not everybody. <laughs> we got out early. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to leave on Thursday um, be, before you guys uh, got, got out. But, yeah, I just had a horrible timing in, on every route that I took. Well, we're glad you but made you got- it down there, man. Glad you made it safely. Glad you didn't uh, get hit in the head with too many tortillas. But give us your takeaways uh, from the game. And also give us just a little foreshadowing for Utah coming to town. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I kind of expected the slow start um, because the the season started a little bit slow. The first coming out of the first bye week started a little bit slow, and it was like if you can just hang on in that first quarter, just don't get blown out in that first quarter. Everything's going to be okay. And so when they went down thirteen nothing, it was like ah, they're fine. They're, they're going to be okay. And you could tell even by the end of that first quarter, especially in the second quarter, the defense had started to make some adjustments. And then you saw Texas Tech really sagging off Colorado's receivers. And so you're like, they're, they're going to get to that short passing game and they're going to start making big plays. And I will say the biggest takeaway was just the blocking downfield on those screen mm. screen passes. That That mm. was something that, you know, that's not going to show up in the box score, but there were a lot of guys that made a lot of plays. It was even offensive linemen. I, I don't know if Cash Cleveland has ever uh, logged that many uh, hours in any football game in his career, uh, that many miles in, in his football career because he was getting downfield. And so that impressed me, just the, the total buy-in. It felt like uh, th- this team is pretty bonded. That's something we've seen uh, in recent weeks. And so – Leading up to Utah, you no, know, that's going to be an angry team coming out here. We, we've seen that their athletic director just got fined by the Big 12 today. He yeah. had to come out with a press release. And so, you know, they're, they're not going to be happy. Uh, but, you know, Colorado uh, is rolling right now. And, and I felt like the only real impediment for this team going into November was that first quarter. And they got over that against Texas Tech. So, uh, yeah, it should be a a fun uh, upcoming uh, stretch here for the Buffs. Yes, indeed, man. Uh, Utah, like you said, kind of like that that, that big brother nemesis a lot of people look at them as for some reason because they've been so good in the the conference and for so long, but they're missing that quarterback now. So uh, hopefully we could take advantage of that also. Yeah, I was looking at that, Chico, and Adam, and I think – you know, the experience he got in, in this past game, um, when you look at this past 15 years, I know teams are different from year to year, staff change, et cetera. Uh, but when you look at program-wise, they've had the Buffs number, and so they believe that they can continue to have that number. And uh, we're we're the first hurdle for them to have a bowl game or not. You know, they, they need two wins to get one, 
and and that has to start with us so i think they're a wounded animal coming here i think they're a cornered animal coming here i think we're going to get their get their best shot uh but when i look at the weapons that we have with shadur sanders and their receiving core and offense and when i look at the fact that in the second half this defense has yet to give up double digit points i think it's like 7.3 you know in the second half of ball games uh i like our odds i think we're just as hungry we have something we're playing for because we know if we keep winning that we're locked into that second place and adam who would have thought other than the three of us who would have thought that the team they said would be number 11 is number two and all we got to do is do our thing and we're going to dallas december 7th jerry world I had Colorado number three on my media preseason poll, and now I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, you, you were you were you were right there though. Three, you know, three three and two is not far apart. Two and eleven, come on, y'all. But you know, I, and not to belabor this point, but I sent out a, a tweet tonight about just the preseason hate that was coming at Colorado, and I, I just didn't understand it because. All you had to do was do some research and look at the players that were coming into this program and go, wow, they have upgraded here, they upgraded here, they upgraded there. And it was four straight transfer windows that Colorado substantially improved as a football team. You're going to get better. And so these computers that put the FBI, FBI for ESPN and all that stuff, like they don't know how to handle those projections, I think, in this transfer portal era. And maybe that's what people were hanging on to, but I never really understood. Well, I, you know, I, I'm going to tell you this. I don't uh, understand it either, but I do expect it. You know, the, the prime effect is real. It cuts both ways. Uh, I think there's still a lot of folks in media world that hold some things against him uh, or anybody with the last name Sanders. And they, and they kind of graded with that involved. You know, I thought Shadour coming out of high school was a five star. They had him at a four. Uh, it's amazing when Travis Hunter, you know, comes to Jackson State to be with Coach Prime. He's no longer number one in the nation. Uh, and, and so the 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 goalpost always moves under Deion Sanders' leadership, but it's just something they don't focus on internally. They just keep doing what they're doing. But you're exactly right. When you look at position by position, this team got better in the offseason. Uh, you look at the coaching staff and the improvements that were made. It got better in the offseason. How someone expected this team to be 11th in the conference with all the changes that were made, it's just haterade, Adam. And it we is, don't hate. you know. No, go ahead. Adam. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I, I didn't have much to add there. I'll let you guys go after this. But, yeah, I just – it's this – knowing that you can write something about Colorado and get clicks, whether it's accurate or not, that yeah. it's just – at times, if I had hair, I would pull it out uh, this past <laughs> off season, But – I just didn't know, quite know how to navigate that from somebody that's trying to do this from just looking at all sides of things, fair, balanced, and it just didn't make sense to me. And it was really frustrating. And now I think back to, to eight and four as my preseason prediction and go that I was underestimating this team's performance. But yet, you know, three months ago, everybody was calling me somebody that doesn't deserve to have a press pass because I'm too much of a homer. And so it's tough to let go of that now that Colorado is seven and two and you want to send off fire off a lot of tweets towards people, but I, I don't know. It, it just, it surprised me that folks wouldn't do research and it's kind of on some level kind of ruined just my faith in other media brethren that, that, you know, you're going to put out stuff in, in, I just don't trust it the way I used to when I was a kid. I understand that, brother. I'll tell you this, and we're going to let you go. You may not have hair, but you have a beard, and that's why I got you some Uncle Needless beard oil coming. Okay, you know, okay. You. This is you, might, you know what? I don't know, Adam. You put some on top, it might grow there too. But it's definitely, it's definitely going to get your beard game up. So I got some for you, bro. I look forward to that. Yeah, I know. I, I need some help there. Should I should I grow this out or keep it short? What, what's your recommendation? I, I, I think you should do what Coach Prime has been doing. When he shaved and we took that loss, he grew it back. You just keep letting it go until we walk out of this college football playoffs. There you go. Okay. I, 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 as long as I get some on, of that. Man. Yeah, so as soon as I get some of that beard oil, I'm not going to sh shave until Colorado loses a football game. You, hey, you got it coming. That's what it is. All right. It's like, thanks, it's like one of the, thanks, Adam. 
Uh, it's like one of those uh, Major League Baseball playoff beards. Back yeah, got to keep it going. Now. Hey, you Chico, quick I mean? update, brother. We got 973, which I know your channel combined. That's going to be well into the thousands watching. We are, uh, we're we're like 1,400, baby. We're like 1,400. Yeah, Checking in right hit now. That, they need to hit that like button. You know, I don't know how you got 970 watching, but don't have 970 likes. Hit that like button. And I think uh, my man Jay Grimes is in, in backstage. We can, we can go ahead and bring him on if he's still there. And that's a bet right now. We're going to bring him on. Until we bring him on, y'all make sure y'all run them likes up. Run them up. likes up.